Hey everyone and welcome back to our UK walking tour video. In today's visit we are sharing with you Farley Hungerford Castle. This picturesque ruin is set in a valley off the River Frome, just a few miles drive from Bath in Somerset. The first stage of the castle was built in the late 14th century, with the second phase later after that. It survived major damage during the English Civil War, although the site is today largely ruined. Join us as we discover a castle that was occupied for over 300 years by the Hungerford family and find out about their gruesome stories as we take you around the site where many hidden treasures and stories lie and we walk down into the famous crypt which housed the best collection of human-shaped lead coffins in Britain. Most of the original living quarters are represented only by low broken walls but there are romantically ruined, empty towers still standing, as well as tall stretches of the outer fortifications and the impressive gatehouse. One of my favourite things about the gatehouse is the Hungerford coat of arms on the front as you come in. Be sure if you are visiting to look out for the small, ornate details that really show off the gatehouse. The inner court was accessed through a twin-towered gatehouse the remains of these are now approached via the modern day footbridge that we walk across. And it's incredible to imagine that this was once the actual gatehouse to the castle. Inside the inner court, there are many grand buildings and chambers. It's so cool to imagine these with the broken down walls just how lavish and elegant the dining room, the living areas and the apartments would have been. These domestic ranges are really quite extensive and impressive once walking the area. Further alterations took place around the 17th century, at which time new windows were inserted and parts of the insides were also redecorated. As we explore the tower in the southwest corner of the castle, you can see that it would have contained five floors of circular rooms. And as you look above, you can see how the staircase wraps around and the fireplaces with its large windows. Whilst we look around here, a gruesome story is told that includes Walter Hungerford III. And it's said that he wasn't the most innocent character. He kept his third wife, Elizabeth, prisoner in this tower which is also known as the Lady Tower, for several years and he even attempted to poison her numerous times. She managed to survive by eating food that was secretly supplied from local women and by drinking her own urine. Letters were sent from this tower to the famous Thomas Cromwell where she asked a divorce from her husband and in this letter she described the abuse she had gone through and she alluded to his homosexual tendencies both Walter and Cromwell were beheaded on Tower Hill in July 1540. Their heads were mounted on stakes and displayed on London Bridge. Whilst the castle has seen very little in the way of warfare, it has such a troubling and gruesome history, which is super interesting to learn about. If only the walls could talk. corner of the inner court stood high round towers which were linked with battlemented walls. On the northern side stood the medieval hall range which included the great hall, a great chamber and undercrofts, whilst the west end of the hall range included the remains of the kitchen with a well and a bread oven which a grisly tale is told of Lady Agnes Hungerford. It was said that she desired one of the young Hungerfords as they were considered a great catch so much so that Lady Agnes had conspired with some henchmen to plot the murder of her husband in 1523. 
so that she could marry Sir Edward. The story transpired that she carried out her plan by having him strangled and his body burnt in the kitchen's bread ovens. It's also said that her ghost returns here on occasions and is regularly seen around the chapel. Sir Edward still married her, murderer or not, and protected her throughout his life. But when he died, his wife and her two accomplices were accused of murder, tried and taken to Tyburn and hanged. of angle towers to the south still stand to their full height. The additional buildings inside the castle are marked only by disconnected footings on the turf. You can still see drainage ditches and the castle well, and also the outer walls and towers that are erected by Sir Walter Hungerford that are still largely intact. Inside of the inner court, there are many grand buildings and chambers. It's so cool to imagine with these broken down walls just how lavish and elegant the dining room, the living areas and the apartments would have been. These domestic ranges are really quite extensive and impressive once you're walking the area. Further alterations took place around the 17th century, at which time new windows were inserted and parts of the insides were also redecorated. The earliest recorded Speaker of the House of Commons was Sir Thomas Hungerford. In 1370, Sir Thomas bought the manor at Farley, on a rise above the River Frome, just four miles from Trowbridge. It is a measure of the times in which he lived that Sir Thomas fortified it without royal permission. At the time, it was less of a castle and more of a manor house, but Thomas Hungerford had ambitions and he was in favour with the king, so he turned the simple manor house into a castle, with towers at each corner, a surrounding wall, a gatehouse and a moat. The castle was built on the site of an earlier, possibly 13th century manor house, although the location lacked strategic importance or strong natural defences, but it was remote from the influence of rival landowners making it suitable for the seat of the potential Hungerford dynasty. His son, Walter, the first Baron of Hungerford, extended the castle even further by turning it into a grand country mansion. And he even included the local parish church as the castle's chapel, which we will visit later on. The fate of the family took a darker turn during the War of the Roses. However, as they lost both their lives, they also lost their castle. Built in 1430 to accommodate the priest, the priest's house later went through various stages. This includes a dairy and then a farmhouse after the Reformation. The restored domestic chambers now house an exhibition centre with displays of the history of the castle. Some interesting things to see and read here is the history surrounding the castle and why it was built and who lived there as well as seeing the incredible displays of the Hungerford armour. The men wearing them were armed with a short sword and a pair of wheel lock pistols. A collection of objects, materials and relics have been excavated to look at, and most impressively, a model of the castle, 
and how it would have looked back in the day throughout the years. One of my favourite things to have seen here were the gargoyles and the different masks with their defined features that are on them. For a short time, Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, held the castle before his death in the Battle of Bosworth, and it was then returned to the Hungerford family by King Henry VIII. But the Hungerfords had very little time to enjoy their home. Edward managed to annoy King Henry, which of course would never be in his favour, and was beheaded. The castle itself was targeted several times during the Civil War and in 1645 it was surrendered. Even though he was often said to be a poor commander and regularly abandoned his troops, Sir Edward Hungerford III was able to take back the castle. In our opinion, the most beautiful part about visiting Farley is a visit to the Chapel of St. Leonard. It was built between 1370 and 1383, and it was built as the parish church. The small North Chapel was added around the 1400s to house Sir Thomas Hungerford's tomb and became the Castle Chapel in the 1440s. It was later altered in the 16th and 17th century. The chapel is notable for many of the Hungerford family monuments and wall paintings which it houses. When you enter, it's so silent and beautiful, and the medieval wall paintings are so stunning and interesting to look at. 
On the right of the altar is an amazing wall painting of St George of the Dragon. This is over 600 years old and it still looks vibrant and imposing, just as if it was painted last week. Looking around the chapel, it has so many different murals and monuments to the Hungerford family. Most impressive is the effigies of Sir Thomas and his wife, Lady Joan. It's fantastic to be able to see the detail and some of the original paintwork, something truly not to be missed when visiting her. Beneath the North Chapel is a 17th century burial crypt that contains eight human-shaped lead coffins. This is the finest collection of this type of coffin in Britain. Two are of infants and four of the adult coffins have moulded faces. Perhaps they are based on death masks. This is super rare to see today and something incredible to experience. We've been lucky enough to visit here a few times now, but with each visit you notice something different or new that you didn't pick up on on your first journey. The chapel and crypt really are beautiful, and as for the castle itself, there is still so much to see. The free audio tour that they offer you with your ticket is fantastic and full of information, although sometimes it's nice to just wander and use your own imagination in these places. So if you've enjoyed our walk today and you've enjoyed wandering the ruins at Farley with us, please be sure to hit that like button, click the notification bell so you don't miss a video and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We appreciate your support always. Thank you to our Patreons, you're awesome. And thank you for watching. Till next time.